Hey everybody, James with uh, Love My Pups and uh, My Breeder Supply. And today we're going to talk about puppy health or dog health. Um, so, the reason I'm doing this today is because we got ourselves a new puppy this weekend. And so, a routine part of, uh, of the care of any dog puppy uh, is to do um, you know, a health check every now and then and just make sure that your puppy seems to be healthy and happy. Now, uh, under the terms of the contract of this little puppy that we got from somebody else, they require that we go to the vet within 48 hours of picking the puppy up and have a health check done. So we're going to do that. But, but I think it makes sense that you should know what's going on because you can do this yourself. Nothing like finding problems before they get serious and just generally making sure that you're, you know, whether it's an adult dog or a little puppy like this, that they are happy, healthy dogs. And take care of problems so they can be nipped in the bud. So let's just do a general evaluation. So the first thing is we're just going to put him down on the ground and we're just going to let him play around a little bit and just see how he behaves. So here he is. He's, he's I don't know if he's ever been around a cat before. But uh, so, you know, again, make do this in a safe environment. You know, you don't want your puppy to get attacked by the cat, for instance. This cat over here, TC, is a very friendly cat and I know he's absolutely not going to hurt anybody, so I'm not worried about it at all. But again, you know, if your family cat doesn't like puppies, then you know, don't don't put them around puppies. Um, so you know, he's he's just woken up, so you know, he slept really well last night. He was not missing his litter mates. He is um, 11 weeks old, so that's kind of the right age to be going to his new home. And so far, we've had him actually since Saturday. He's and today's Monday, and he's just been a very happy, healthy little boy. But. Now here's the things we can see. We can look at his gait, we can see the way he walks around, we can see whether he looks like structurally he's in good shape, we can see whether he's alert, whether he wants to check things out, which obviously he's doing right now, or is he just wonder, is he very scared, just wants to get underneath things and not interact. So, you know, what can you expect of a puppy in a new home? Well, different dogs have different personalities. This guy here is really outgoing little boy. He's, he's very sweet, he's very loving, and uh, he is exactly what you'd expect from a healthy pup in the way that he's behaving. He's inquisitive, he's a little, little unsure about what's going on, but at the same time he's not yelping and disappearing off and hiding and he wants to explore things. So this is a very good first start. And you can see when he walks, his back end looks nice and straight, he's got his ears up, um, and he just you know, generally looks like a happy little boy. So there's the first part of our examination. Okay. So now we're going to grab him up here, if I can get hold of him. <laughs> Come on, baby. Have you named him yet? No, we haven't named him yet. That's something we've got to work on this next few days. We're going to see how his personality is. So, so he is a lilac. Okay, here you go, buddy. He is a lilac French bulldog. So he's, 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 he's both brown and chocolate. He carries a copy of cream and he's double A recessive with no brindle and no, and, uh, and no, uh, no pied. So he's really a nice little boy and he's not going to be very big. And so those are all great qualities. Okay. So, whether this is a big dog or a small dog, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do an examination from his tip to his tail. And so we're going to talk about all the things that could be relevant about where you might have problems and how you might be able to detect those things. And then, um, you know, obviously at some point if you have problems, you're probably going to enlist the help of your vet. And remember on all of these videos that uh, I'm not a licensed veterinarian, I'm not a medical practitioner, I'm an engineer, but I do love French Bulldogs, and I have been around many dogs over the last, well, 60 plus years of my life. Um, and so, I, you know, I've, I've, I've come across a lot of issues that need to be taken care of, and so I'm just kind of passing that knowledge on. But remember again, not a vet. Any of the information you get from me is purely speculative, and it's, you know, check anything that I say. If you don't think it's right, or if you want a second opinion, you should absolutely get that. And you should not rely on anything I say as being definitely correct and I promise you of the information that I give I don't deliberately give anything that is wrong information but I know that occasionally I do give wrong information and I get called on that on these videos and so I think that's a great feedback for me if I'm doing things you think are incorrect or if you think I should do things a different way or if you think the advice I'm giving is is wrong absolutely let us know and uh, we will pass that along okay so let's start with I'm gonna get my I'm on a table here. I want to be in a place where he's not going to fall off, where he feels secure and he's not too timid. 
Okay. So let's let's start at the beginning. Let's go with this. Let's go with the nose. So here is French Bulldogs do have a habit of having small nostrils, which can make them pretty snorty. So can you get a close up on that and see his nose, his nose holes, his nares? They're pretty good. They're pretty nice and open. They're not collapsed. So he has not been snorting. I don't hear much noise from him at all. And generally, I think he has very nice nares. But you can see nares that are really squished up like this, and those absolutely can be a problem for a Frenchie. And um, the problem is, is they can really run out of steam if they're out on a hot day exercising hard. They really want to get out there and play, but they can't get enough oxygen intake. And they really can get short of breath and low on oxygen, and it can be a problem. So the fix for that is you have the nares opened up, which does require surgery, and you typically don't do that until a dog has got some weight behind it, maybe you know, nine months old or older before you tackle that kind of a problem. All right, so his nose looks good. His nose, there's no discharge. His nose is moist, that's what we expect to see. His nose is kind of, it's kind of damp. There's no drainage coming from his nose. There's no clear or yellow or green discharge. A yellow or green discharge would be of great concern, and that would imply that there's some kind of infection going on, and that would absolutely require a trip to the vet and probably some antibiotics, but that looks fine. Okay, so let's look at his eyes. So you wanna see eyes that are nice and clear. Now, we have a puppy care kit, by the way. This is one of the products that we sell, and in the puppy care kit comes this little tool right here, which is kind of nice to use light on it and there it is so good light and if you're old like me you definitely need some glasses so let's look at his eyes so we want to look for clear and bright eyes we want to pull down the bottom and make sure that the the sclera the white portion of the eye looks nice and clear top and bottom and that his nictating membrane the part the third eyelid at the bottom is not you can see it there that pink part is not bulging out you can have a thing called cherry eye where it forms in the corner of the eye and it kind of makes a little pocket and that if that happens then at some point you may have to have that cherry eye fixed it's relatively straightforward to do but we don't want to see a cherry eye so both eyes i'm looking down the bottom it looks good and now i'm going to go up to the top here and i'm hoping i can do this so you can see this too there's the top part of his eye Oh, he doesn't like that very much, and I can understand why. That's no, nice and clear. No, you know, a little bit of muck in the corner of the eye, completely normal, especially after they've just woken up, which he has. It's just exactly the same as you and I. You may get some crusty stuff in the corner of your eye, normal. Drainage from the eye uh, that is yellow or green, again, would be a major concern. A little bit of dampness in the corner of the eye, tear duct is fine. Uh, dogs tend to have, a, especially dogs that are clear, you tend to see a stain coming down here and and that's okay you just don't want to see a lot of drainage going on but you certainly don't want to see a dry eye you don't want to see a dog that's got one eye partially closed a dog that's got one eye that looks different than the other those are things that would be of concern and by the way and all of this if this is your first time doing it then do it again because there's nothing like knowing how the healthy dog should look you know so you know, this is all about experience, and so the first time you look at your dog, how do you know if it's normal? Well, the answer is, the more times you do this, the more you know what normal is. All right, eyes look good, nose look good. Let's look at his teeth. So we're going to lift his gum up, and I'm looking for a gum here that looks nice and pink, kind of a salmon-y color. That's what I want to see, and I'm seeing that. And then I'm, while I'm here, I can look at his teeth. Now, young dog like this should have no teeth issues at all. There shouldn't be any plaque or, or muck. Shouldn't be stinky. I can look at the bottom gum. There it is there. Looks nice and healthy. We'll go to the other side. Look, lift up here. And he's doing fine for me. He's not really complaining too much. And we'll look at the bottom gum. And he says, I've had enough of you messing with my mouth. And generally, I could see it. It generally looks nice and clear. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at his, at his roof of his mouth and generally his whole mouth. Much harder to do. So one thing I like to do is to see what is the bite on the dog. Do their teeth come together nicely at the front? And there's his teeth. And they look nice. French Bulldogs tend to have a protruding bottom jaw with this flat face. You tend to see an underbite. His, his bite's really very nice. It's not absolutely perfect, but it's pretty darn good. All right, now we're gonna look in his mouth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger top of his mouth, and that way I can hold his mouth open. And I can do a quick look in there, and it looked really nice and pink and clear. I didn't see anything there that caused me any concern. That was hard for you to see. I didn't do it long enough where you can see it really, but basically the answer is, is to get that, get your finger on the top of his mouth, the roof of his mouth, and you can lift his mouth up, and then you can open his jaw up and take a look inside. All right, not gonna like you doing that. Um, what are things that you can see in any dog? Well, broken teeth, 
uh, swollen gums, an abscess, one side of the mouth looks different than the other, one tooth looks different than the other, those would all be signs that you have some kind of a tooth problem. Definitely time for a trip to the vet. Okay, so ears. So ears are things that definitely need to be cleaned out on a regular basis in dogs. If you don't do that, then they can absolutely have problems from yeast infections and ear mites. So uh, my wife is so much better at this than me, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down in there. And it goes down quite deep on the side and it should come back Look at that, that is a dirty ear right there. So there you go. So there's the first thing that is a no-no on this guy here. He needs to have his ears cleaned. You see this muck that's on there? Can you see that, Russ? Yeah. Pretty mucky and nasty. So what do you do? Well, you keep on going. And I'm actually, I'm not gonna sit here and spend the next five minutes doing this in front of you, but basically get it down in there, pull it out, and it needs to start, you see, the second go, it's quite a bit clearer. You gotta keep on doing that till it comes up clear. Right, so now what can be going on here? Well. Could be just general dirt, which this probably is, needs to be cleaned. But what happens is if you let this keep on going, you can get um, a yeast infection and you can get ear mites. So, how do you tell if you've got a yeast infection or ear mites? Well, this little guy right here, which comes up puppy care kit, is a great tool for looking down inside an ear. You're not gonna be able to see this, but basically there's a light when I press the button, I can get this down in there, and then I can really start to look down in his ear and his ear generally looks pretty good. All right, so he just needs a good cleaning. Right, sniff test. <laughs> his ear smells good. If he had an ear infection, typically it will smell pretty nasty. So the sniff test is always a good test. A sniff test on a dog in general. I know this looks crazy. This dog smells like a puppy. It smells nice and clean, and that's a good thing. Um, all right, so we've kind of done the head. So we did nose, we did teeth, we did mouth, we did eyes, we did ears. So now it's time to just generally feel over this little guy and see how his whole body feels. Is there bumps? Does he wince? Is there crusted material? Is there something underneath that skin that should be of, shouldn't be there? And so just to generally feel over his whole body, he'll generally like this, just to generally feel his entire body for anything that we think is doesn't feel right, feels different on one area than another. And I'm not feeling anything that is causing him any distress, and nor am I um, coming up with anything that feels different in particular areas. So I think that he doesn't probably have any parasites, but things that can happen would be ticks. So where do you get ticks on a dog? Well, a great place for ticks are in the eyelids, the corner of the eyelids, around or inside the ears, which are places that dogs can't get to to clean. It's another great place to see ticks. Uh, on the, in the folds of their skin and on their paws, those are great places to see ticks. So we're gonna look here and we're gonna look at his paws. And while we're doing that, we'll look at the, the uh, can you see the paws at the bottom of your feet? Maybe it's easier on the back ones. He's not really liking this. So what we wanna see is a pads that look uniform that they're not any red or ulcerated anywhere, and that there's nothing there that was, you know, nothing in there in the pads that would cause him problem. So dogs that are on concrete a lot, uh, or dogs that maybe are running on the beach, they can start to have problems with their pads. So what do you do if you have a dog that has an ulcerated paw? The answer is, is you stop them being in that environment for a bit while they can try and heal up. Um, you can put some salve on there, antibacterial cream if you've got cuts and abrasions. You can put booties on dogs. If you've got hunting dogs and, they, and they, you want to take them out in the field but they have compromised pads, put some booties on them. So the secret to paw problems is first off, check your dogs on a regular basis. Make sure that this is the place that they have the contact with the ground. And you know, if you think about it, there can be a lot of trauma to a dog's foot pretty quickly. If your dog is favoring a paw and not wanting to put it down, definitely go check, make sure he doesn't have a splinter, make sure he doesn't have an ulcerated pad. If he's got a splinter, remove it. If he's got an ulcerated pad, then get some, um, clean it up, get some salve on it, and then maybe get a booty on it and stop him from going out for a little bit so that he could be more like on carpet versus being on rough ground and see if that cures the thing. If he doesn't get better within a day or two, trip to the vet. How about the uh, dew claws? Do you check, make sure that they... Yeah, so well, so this guy here has dew claws. We typically remove the dew claws, 
can't do this when they're this age. Dew claw's got to be removed before they're five days old. So we're going to live with this dew claw and he'll just have that for the rest of his life. I like removing them because it's one place that doesn't really do them any good <coughs> and it can cause them to get hung up and get them ripped out. But lots of people don't like the idea of removing dew claws and so I get called on that whenever I do a video. I'll get about 5% of the people who say you shouldn't be doing it. So I'll just let that you decide on that. Right. So he's, 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 he's his toenails, they need to be clipped on a regular basis. How do you clip the toenails on a dog? Well, I've got videos on this, but suffice to say, he has got nicely trimmed. By the way, this dog came from a veterinary team, husband and wife, Sam and Sarah are out of Missouri, very, very nice people. And this guy came to us, I think, in superb condition. And I think that's a testament to exactly what they do with their dogs. They know what to do. So his, 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 uh, toenails are clipped pretty nice and short. They look good. Um, it can be a challenge to cut the toenails on a dog that they are dark. You can't see quite where the quick starts. So I'm not going to trim these because they don't need it. But basically, you've got to get good light. You've got to get a good crip on the dog. And you need some. These come with a puppy care kit. You need some proper clippers to do it. So the technique is to go right in the end. And we're just going to... There's a little bit. And we just took a tiny bit off because he really doesn't need it. Any more than that, they'd start to bleed and he wouldn't like me. All right, so good paws, good nails, happy with that. Okay, so French Bulldogs have a bad habit of getting luxating patellas. That is where their kneecap rotates to the, is a groove in your, in your knee. You might look at my knee here for a second if you can see it. So I've got a knee replacement, so I'm kind of a bit different than most people. But there is a groove in the, the two bones that come together for your, um, uh, the, where the kneecap rides on that and the kneecap is kind of has a kind of a wedge in the middle of it, and it rides in that groove well in big dogs it tends to go on the outside and on the little dogs it tends to go on the inside it's called a luxating patella and that can be a problem for French Bulldogs so you can this is one of the things that the doc is going to do so the test for this is here's the kneecap and I can feel that kneecap and the, it, the question is can I move that kneecap to the inside or the outside and so there's him standing there's him with an outstretched leg, which is the easiest place to get that to move. And I can feel that is a nice tight kneecap. It's not going anywhere. And then there's a kneecap that's bent, which he's, it, that, if it's got a luxating patella, it may already be off on the out, may already be popped off on the inside of the outside. But his kneecap is absolutely fine. No problems whatsoever at all. So that's gonna be something that, uh, you know, if you have a health, and this is the easiest place to luxate it, is when it's stretched out like this, because it's the loosest. And his kneecap is just staying, I can move it a little bit and it bounces right back into the, into the groove doesn't want to come out at all. So he's got good kneecaps. Um, okay, so now, now the not so nice part of a puppy, the back end. How many minutes are we into this? 13. Okay, so we're getting, so now the, here's the back end. The, the not so nice part of a puppy. All right, so let's just give a good clean off. So, so the first thing is, is we're going to just clean things off. And uh, you know, there's a little bit of debris there. So can you see his back end, his anus? Sure. He looks nice and clean. So the first thing we're gonna do, and any time that there's any questions about whether a puppy or a dog is maybe not a tip-top condition, would be, what is the dog's temperature? And somewhere here, I have a thermometer. Yes, you go for a second. This is really fine. Comes in the puppy care kit, of course, right when I need it. I can't find the silly thing. Uh, maybe if we're going to just one second here. Sorry, folks. Keep talking to them for us. All right. How about we let our puppy talk? Oh, come here. Come here. <coughs> Hop up here, sweetie. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Absolutely gorgeous puppy. Yours are already flopped over. <coughs> come here. Beautiful eyes. Your eyes look blue. Look at those eyes. Come here. And it's a beautiful morning outside. Perfect for video. Oh, oh, come on. Come here. I don't know if we're doing a video on puppy care kit or we're doing a video just on cute puppies. Oh. This morning he was laying down. Had to wake him up. Took him outside. Oh, come here. We got a little sleep in his eye, don't we? Good job. Good job. Okay. 
Well. Missing your thermostat or your? Yeah, I am. I left it down. I'm going to put this puppy cake in. I'll check the thermometer. And uh, I left it down there because I'm an idiot. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> a little cold. Um, right, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to do this. We're going to pretend this is a thermometer. But this is very important. And I wish I had the real thermometer here to do this. Um, we'll get another one here in a moment. So here's the deal. <coughs> to take a puppy's th temperature, you need to lubricate, you need to clean the area off. You did that. You need to clean the thermometer off and make sure you're not inserting anything nasty. It should have been cleaned from last time you used it. You want to lubricate the end of the thermometer because it's got to go in and it needs to go in, you know, at least an inch. You can't just put it in a little waist. This may be a little bit big here, but here we go. And he will def definitely be wriggling on me when we do this. All right, you're okay, buddy. You're okay. And there it is. It's in. So the thermometer's in there. <clears throat> you press the button, you need to wait till it beeps. And it's going to take about 30 seconds. So what is the normal temperature of a dog? Well, the answer is it's something less than 102 degrees Fahrenheit or 39 degrees centigrade. If you've got a temperature higher than 102, that means that something is going on with this dog and the dog has some kind of a battle going on uh, with some kind of an infection, cold, whatever. And if you go get this resolved quickly, you definitely got to make a trip to the vet. So you can see how much of that I got into the dog all the way up to where the muck is. I got a good solid inch into that dog. You've got to get this thing in there a long ways. And the secret to it is, is gentle pressure with a well lubricated um, uh, tip on, on the uh, thermometer. I'm going to do another video later on of just of doing temperatures. Because you know, anytime anybody calls me up and they want to talk about their dog and they think they have a problem, the very first thing I'm going to ask you is, what's the dog's temperature? <clears throat> a digital thermometer that you can buy at Walmart is like, five bucks I mean this is just a basic piece of equipment if you don't have one you absolutely should go buy one so the first line of any kind of diagnosis of a dog that's not feeling well same with human beings is to take their temperature and if they got a temperature of less than 102 it's probably nothing too dramatic if they got a temperature above 102 I wouldn't muck around I go to the vet and find out what the heck's going on all right um, one more thing while we're here um, anal glands don't have a problem with this as French is, but what you can do is you can squeeze both sides of this and see if any junk comes out. If you have a dog that has a problem with anal glands, this wants to be done on a regular basis. It's called expression of their anal glands. You absolutely can do this yourself. By the way, other thing to look for on this dog. Here's a male. Does he have two descended testes? And the answer is, you can see them right there, there and there, two descended testes. So that's good. We want two descended testes. We don't have two, you can see two little bumps. We don't have two to set to ten, we'll be watching it. They've got to come down by six months. If you've only got one down and not the other, then you can manipulate to try and help that testy to descend. If it doesn't descend, the dog needs to be neutered. You don't want to breed a dog with only one testy. And a dog that only has one testy or no testes can develop testicular cancer. Much more greater chance of that happening. So absolutely, uh, you know, those are the, that, that should be check during health checkup okay I think I've taken up enough of your time I think we went you don't know from one end to the other on this dog um, let's just talk quickly about parasites we did mention ticks fleas is another common thing that can happen with dogs uh, a great way to find out about fleas is to go get a dog on a white piece of paper get a brush and just start brushing the dog and see what falls on the ground if you've got little white specks that are falling on the ground and they're moving you got fleas. White specks? I'm sorry, thank you, black specks. If you've got little black specks and they're hopping around and moving, those are fleas. If you've got little black specks, they're not moving, that's probably, that's probably the, the um, flea feces. And what you can do is rub your nail over them, and if they smear and you have some red in there, I guarantee that that is the blood inside the feces and those fleas have been feasting on your dog. So what would you do? Well, dogs need to have uh, be cleaned on a regular basis so we shampoo our dogs with uh, with pet shampoo um, and then you can apply things and you can give orally things that will stop fleas uh, other common problems especially in puppies are gut parasites coccidia and uh, giardia are very common things your your doc will take a stool sample and look at it under a microscope and from that determine whether or not you need to do any uh, any preventative measures for uh, parasites. And then shots. You know, all dogs need to have shots. 
Uh, these puppies need shots at six, nine, 12 weeks. They need rabies shots at, at six months. They need yearly booster shots of rabies, very important. Heartworming medications, yes, you should be doing that. Um, there are things like roundworms and hookworms that can affect human beings, so be a little bit careful on this. If you've got a dog that you know has got an infestation, it's time to put some gloves on. Um, and then wash your hands before and afterwards to make sure that you're not passing things on to other dogs or to yourself. Okay, so again, we're gonna say goodbye to James, me, and this little boy right here. Yeah, I know, he's a nice little boy. Uh, and again, got any questions, worries, concerns, then you can go to our website, www.lovemypups.com. Nothing like the smell of a puppy in the morning. Or you can buy products from us like our whelping kits, our incubators, and our puppy care kits. And that is www.mybreedersupply.com. Hey, everybody. Have a great time with your puppies. Look after them, love them, treat them nicely. And they will do the same to you. Bye. Put him down on the ground. Let him play. He wants to kiss me. I know. Nice little puppy. Nice structure. Good looking little boy. Camera shy. He just wants